All right, let's settle this once and for all. Should you go for the iPad mini 6 or is the 11 inch iPad Pro a better choice for you? Let's ramble. Hold up, place go up when I pull up. They all on me like at once. Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So if you've been to the channel before, you know how much I love my iPad mini 6. It is the tablet I use the most by far every single day. And there's a ton of content on the channel where you can hear me rave about how wonderful this little device is. Based on those videos, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, should I get the iPad mini 6 or is it better to go for the smaller iPad Pro, the 11 inch instead? Here's the thing though, I didn't own an 11 inch iPad Pro. My workhorse iPad, if you will, has always been the big boy 12.9 inch version. And while that's essentially the same tablet as the 11 inch, you know, apart from the better display and a few small perks, the experience of carrying such a smaller tablet is a very different one. So I never really felt like I could give you more than a generic answer to that question. But of course, I wanna be a good little tech YouTuber and I love you guys. So I finally went and got the M2 11 inch iPad Pro. I spent a decent amount of time working on it and carrying it around with me and I feel confident sharing my thoughts with you now. Oh, and because of something that happened just this week, I'm so glad I bought this particular iPad. But more about that later on in the video. Anyway, let's compare these two tablets, you know, in terms of specs, and I will go over some of the use cases, and then I'll explain why I believe that while these tablets might look very similar, they actually offer a very different user experience. Right, let's start with the design. Like I said, they both look pretty similar, especially since Apple applied the same design language to the iPad mini 6 as it has to the rest of the newer iPad lineup, resulting in the same sleek, boxy design, glass and aluminum, thinner bezels and the absence of a home button. With that said, the similarities really end there. Both the mini and the 11 inch have four speaker grills, but on the mini, only two of those grills are populated with actual speakers, as you can see when we use our magnet paper. The Pro, on the other hand, delivers four speaker audio, which of course results in a much fuller and richer sound. The Pro has five studio quality microphones, as Apple calls it, whereas the Mini has a much simpler dual microphone setup. Both tablets have the on and off button on the top, but only the Mini's button comes with Touch ID. The iPad Pro has Face ID, which the Mini doesn't have. I personally quite like Touch ID, but I know I'm in a bit of a minority there. Both tablets have USB-C, thank God, but only the Pro is Thunderbolt compatible, which of course has implications both for connectivity and speed. Another very visible difference is of course the size. The 11 inch iPad Pro may be the smaller one of the Pros, but it's still considerably larger than the Mini. Unsurprisingly, that means that it's also quite a bit heftier than the Mini. The camera bump also looks quite different and that is because the Mini 6 rocks a single 12 megapixel wide camera on the back, whereas the Pro has a wide and an ultra wide lens and of course the LiDAR scanner. On the front, both have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, but only the Pro has that true depth camera system. Now, one of the most noticeable differences will 100% be the display. The Pro has a liquid retina display with a 600 nits brightness. The Mini also has a liquid retina display and it peaks at 500 nits brightness. So the display should be pretty similar apart from a little extra brightness on the Pro. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The reason for this is the fact that the Pro has 120 Hertz Pro motion display, while the Mini has no Pro motion and tops out at 60 Hertz. And that is noticeable. I would dare to say that the display is the iPad Mini's biggest weakness. You may remember Jellygate, where people kicked up a big stink about the fact that the iPad Mini has jelly scrolling, which is caused by the slow refresh rate. We won't get into that right now. I dedicated an entire video to the jelly scroll issue. I'll link to that in the description below in case you're interested. And while you're down there, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Plenty of fresh iPad content coming your way. For now, suffice to say that the display on the Pro is significantly better than the one on the iPad mini. When we flip the iPads over, you will notice that the iPad mini does not have smart connectors on the back, and that means no magic keyboard. Even if you wanted a magic keyboard on the mini, there's just no way to connect it. With that said, 
I really don't understand why anyone would want a magic keyboard on such a small tablet. The typing experience would be absolutely horrendous. But I know some people have it high on their wish list to each their own, I guess. For me, that is absolutely not something I'd want. In fact, I don't really enjoy typing on the 11 inch keyboard that much. I guess I'm so used to the full sized keyboard on the 12.9 inch that typing on the 11 inch feels cramped and uncomfortable. Now, purely as a protective case, the Magic Keyboard isn't all that either, with the sides exposed and, you know, a pretty loose fit. You really don't want to drop this. Thankfully, there are plenty of alternatives to the Magic Keyboard case, such as this Inspire 4-mode case by TomTalk. And thank you very much to TomTalk for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you've ever searched for a protective cover for any of your devices, I'm sure you've come across TomTalk. They are a household name, and that is because they make really solid and good-looking accessories that don't don't break the bank. This case is no exception. It has a nice and sleek look, but it feels really robust. Contrary to the Magic Keyboard, this case has all around heavy duty protection, which they have recently given an all new upgrade, 360 degrees reinforced rubber and enhanced protection on the edges. And as we all know, those edge drops are the fatal ones. So having this extra protection in those places is very reassuring. The camera bump is well protected as well. But it's not just the high level of protection. This case is also extremely versatile. It can be used in portrait mode, which is super useful for those video calls, landscape mode for things like typing on a full-sized Bluetooth keyboard, or if you wanna just catch up on some content. You can adjust the angles based on your use case. And there's sketch mode, which I personally find very useful for things like taking handwritten notes with a second gen Apple Pencil. The pencil, by the way, can be stored inside the flap so it stays in place while you stow away your iPad. The premium PU leather cover has an auto wake and sleep function. Oh, and if you wanna use your iPad in tablet mode, the protective case completely detaches from the bottom so you can use it like that. TomTalk was kind enough to let me give away three of these cases to my subscribers. Just let me know that you want one and in a couple of weeks, I will announce the winners on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me there as well. Anyway, the fact that Apple decided not to make the mini Magic Keyboard compatible for me really starts to indicate the main difference between these two tablets. One is a laptop alternative, not a replacement, but an alternative. The other one is not. Here's the thing. On paper and in terms of specs, the M2 iPad Pro is far superior. It's objectively the better tablet. That's just a fact. The question is, does that mean anything to you in terms of real life usage? Are you looking to do a fair bit of typing and work? And would you like to leave your laptop at home as much as you can? The iPad Pro is obviously a better choice for you. But are you the kind of user that just likes to grab the device and chill on the couch, read a book or flip through TikTok? 100% get the mini. The iPad Pro will feel heavy after a while, whereas the iPad mini feels almost like a Kindle and you can easily hold it one-handed for an extended period of time. The Pro is just not really a handheld device in my opinion. Take gaming for example. Games look amazing on the Pro with a bright display and especially rocking that 120 Hz ProMotion display. Hook up a nice controller and you've got yourself a pretty sweet setup. But if you want that real handheld experience, if you wanna play a quick game on the bus and toss it in your bag when you're done, the iPad mini is the one you want. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the iPad mini is the only tablet tablet in Apple's lineup. All the other tablets are designed to be more than that. And if you use your iPad for work a lot, I would advise you to get the Pro with a Magic Keyboard. But if you want a tablet mainly used for consumption, the Mini is an amazing choice. There's one more group of users I would recommend the Mini to, and that is the user that already owns a MacBook or an iPad Pro, is sick of carrying a massive iPhone Pro Max around and wants something more pocketable, but wants something bigger to watch content on the couch or in bed. Now I know this is getting pretty decadent and most of us won't be thinking in that direction at all, but hey, if you have the cash to burn, why not? Now, earlier on in the video, I said that I was really glad that I sort of forced myself to buy the M2 11 inch iPad Pro so that I could do this comparison for you guys. And that is because of some amazing news that just dropped this week. Channel regulars will remember that I refused to review the M2 iPad Pro when it came out. I was really disappointed about what looked like a very incremental upgrade to the M1 iPad Pro. And I argued that my spec'd out M1 iPad Pro was still complete overkill because of the lack of Pro apps on iPadOS. And I saw no reason whatsoever to review an even more powerful iPad Pro if there isn't any apps for it. Well, all of that changed this week because finally, and I am saying finally, Apple announced that two of their biggest Pro apps, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro are coming to the iPad. 
This is a huge deal for Creative. We've been asking for these apps to come to the iPad for years, and every time the rumor mill started spinning, it didn't happen. Well, Final Cut for the iPad Pro will be here on May 23rd, and now I'm actually happy that I got the 16-inch version of the M1 iPad Pro, and now I'm actually interested in this M2 iPad Pro because it will have some exclusive features like scrubbing through a timeline without having to actually touch the iPad. Now, as you can tell, I'm super excited about this, but the majority of you probably won't care that much because not everybody edits videos, I know that, or produces music. And that kind of illustrates the point I've been trying to make throughout the video, that if you wanna use your iPad for work, creative or otherwise, the 11 inch iPad Pro will be the better choice out of the two. But if you're looking for the ultimate everyday consumption device that is just really, really fun to use, get the mini and don't look back. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it one of these. It really does make a difference. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.